I still remember the first time I went to the mountain. When I was four, I tried snowboarding. I just feel like so much freedom when I ride snowboard. I can go everywhere that I want. And I start hit like little jump. In the air, I feel like so quiet. I can see like everything, like mountain people. I feel like so much freedom. I decided to be pro snowboarder and training, start training at 14. I will have the dream to be like to compete in Beijing Olympic Games, my hometown. China, Su Yiming winning gold in the men's snowboard Big Air three days before his 18th birthday. Su's the first Chinese snowboarder ever to win Olympic gold. He already won silver in the slope style competition earlier. Did you expect yourself prior to the Beijing Olympics? to be so successful, to win medals, not to mention gold medal there? To be honest, like, no. I start have this dream when I was... Four, five? No, 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 like 10. And looking up to your role model, like uh, Mark there, right? Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. Like, I met Mark when I was 12. Mm -hmm. Like he came to China for the competition. What was your first reaction when you saw him? Like, your role model wow. there. I was like, wow, Harold is here, right here. I right. took a picture with him, talked to him. He's mm -hmm. been so nice to me. When I start snowboarding, when I start hitting little jumps, I watch the videos. Then Mark Memory just come out. He did his first back triple 14. Mm -hmm. Then I told myself, that's like my goal too. I want to learn the back 14 mm -hmm. some days, you know, in my life. And little did you expect that actually in the Beijing Winter Games, you yeah, no. beat him yeah. and uh, you actually came up with second and he finished the third. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that scene, you know, uh, how did you feel about that moment when that reality came true? That means a lot to me, like, to be put in with my hair, or, you know, after competition I told him like thank you so much for showing me like when I was young you know I told him you are my hero I just trying to be like you like no matter what like you are my hero like forever. In your first event the uh, snowboarding men's slope style um, there was some uh, if you will a judging controversy there uh, even afterwards and what was your reaction really uh, after you uh, settled for the silver? I mean, I didn't care. I mean, it doesn't really? matter. I, yeah, yeah, really, really. To be honest, I, I don't, I didn't care. It doesn't matter. I just doing what I love, and feel, we are like big family. We are like competing at the same time, but it's more like friends, you know. We just compete and do our best. I, I enjoy the competition. The most important thing, I land my run. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it's a big challenge to put like 18 at the slope style. It's like so hard and it's in my first time ever, so. What did Max uh, Parrot tell you after his victory in men's uh, slope style? Because he won over you, I believe, and, uh, and then you two actually continued in the second event that is Big Air. Actually, I told, I like talked to Max after Big Air. I told him, I know like a lot of things going on after like slope style, but you know, I respect you a lot. Like, He's one of my like, favorite writer to watch. Like he trains so hard. You know he get like cancer, right? right? Yeah, exactly. And the comeback, recover. Com recover and the comeback, still get gold medal. I I told like people, I told him no one like more deserved like to get these gold medals. Right. Um, and uh, I'm sure uh, Milano Winter Games are within your expectation, and you have already uh, you know half size right there on this. Mm -hmm big event, and perhaps even further, I mean, how far are you thinking about now? Um, definitely like Milan. I'm trying to get another goal at the slope style. Did, did you see the video that, the interview I took with my coach? Yes. It was saying I cannot have any girlfriend before I get a uh, slope style gold medal in Milan. That's right. That's so right. I'm trying, I'm trying to get another goal at the Milan. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean? In your event, right, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, only or events, I should say, but you know, really, as older, uh, as you get older and older, it will be more difficult for you to finish more difficult moves and so forth because of the reaction and many other things. 
how far can you still go in your slope style and also in your big air? Can you still push it to raise the bar even higher to increase your degree of difficulty? That's what I'm trying because, you know, I felt like it would never stop. People just keep going, keep going. I'm, I did 90, 80, like maybe last November or something, but see, like, there's a lot of people put 19. It's like normal trick. 1900 yeah, degrees. 1900s, not special I can't even think about it. Age. Not special anymore. And oh, 21 cool. just come up yesterday. Wow. 2160 just come up yesterday. Uh -huh. um, Are these your objectives? To get to do 19 or to, to do 21? My, my goal is like 2340. I think that, Ooh. yeah, I'm gonna try next season for sure. Yeah. Hey, I'm Su Yiming. You are watching Sports Sing on CGTN. What kind of a person are you off the training ground, off the uh, competition venue? Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, what do you like? And I mean, in your pastime, what do you do? I like fishing, you know. You like fishing? I like fishing. Everyone thinks like... That's different from your... Yeah, you're way different. Like Totally active, you know, yeah, acts, yeah. yeah. Snowboarding, you just you know, keep moving and flipping. But right. fishing, you're just sitting right there and wait, like, so peaceful. Why? I just like to, you know, take the time and just keep waiting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, like, pretty fun and so much different compared to, like, to snowboarding. Right, right, right. I just want to try mm -hmm. everything. Like, always trying to do something different. So you're telling me that, you know, off the court, you are just like a normal kid, a, yeah, you know, a teenager who is still growing. Yeah. Just still hung up with friends, you know. Good, that's, that's good to know. Um, but you do have this kind of a maturity that you show even beyond your real age. As I mentioned, you just turned 18. Yeah. But on court, you know, at a competition venues, you could be very, very mature. You show your composure right there. You're very calm. What is that? Where does that come from? Because um, snowboarding is kind of like hard. When you're when you like already at that level, like spinning 1800, mm -hmm. if you want to keep going, you have to be like so much focused on what are you, what, what, what are you doing. The safe is always first, right? Mm -hmm. Always trying to put some new tricks, but you have to make sure you're safe. So I have to but everything going to that way, like so much focus. That's what I learned, something I learned from snowboarding. Mm -hmm. So I put in everything. Like when I do something, I just like fully focus, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. You are actually a multi-talented young man because I know that at the age of eight, you were already in a movie, actually a couple of movies. One is, uh, you know, uh, as a role of Xiao Xuanzi and so yeah. forth, which was very popular and uh, you're good at acting in, a, in, in terms of uh, you know, filming. Are you thinking about doing more movies when you have some spare moments? Yeah, of course. I'm definitely gonna come back to acting again. One of my dream is you know, trying to make snowboarding movie. Mm. Like acting, snowboarding, I wanna put this thing like, together. Wouldn't that be great to do so because you, that will help people you know, raise the awareness of snowboarding yeah, yeah. and also get more people involved in snowboarding yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what i want to do like let more people know about snowboarding and make snowboarding more famous when i say you are multi-talented you're not only good at you know acting in filming uh, in films rather but also you're very good at languages you know you speak english beautifully and of course mandarin is your mother tongue of not to mention a couple of dialects and also you speak a little bit of Japanese and so forth. I mean, do you consider yourself very linguistically talented as well? Or? Like me, yeah. like talented? Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm not, I think I'm not that talented. Oh, you'll be modest. No, 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 to be honest, I'm not like that talent. For language, I, I don't, I cannot speak any English from four years ago. <laughs> but when I study- oh, you're so fluent. No, 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 no. 
I start training with my coach, right? He's Japanese and I'm Chinese. He cannot speak any Chinese, so we have to have a conversation. That's the time I start learning English, because I know if I want to like getting better, I have to know, understand what he's saying. Right. That's the time I start learning English, and now still learning a bit like Japanese. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about your coach, I know that he's like a fatherly figure to you because you guys spend a lot of time together. How much influence has he been exerting on you? This means a lot to me. After I get a silver medal, I put the medal on his neck. Right. And that the first I told him is like, thank you for changing my life. Before I met him, I'm not even trying to be like pro snowboarder. I just doing what I love. But after I start training with him, I see like more like like you know, I I thought like I had a chance to be in the Olympic Winter Olympic Games. He's not only teach me about like snowboarding, like how to be a good person. Sometimes he's like coach, sometimes he's like friends with me, sometimes he's even like father. I know that uh, during your upbringing process, your parents also, uh, you know, uh, posed a lot of uh, positive impact right there on you. And tell us about you, about your parents' influence. Well, my parents, I feel so lucky to have my parents on my back all the time, you know, because, um, when I was eight, I get injury, like, which is really bad, but I um, still remember the first word after injury, my mom told me, like, you cannot give up with snowboarding, you have to keep going, doing what I love, you know, like, they support me all the time, you know. Right now, you are already a household name in China. When I, uh, before I came here, I talked to people that I would talk to, you mean today, you know, your fans and followers would say, wow, you know, say hi to him. But they would like to know more about you. So what would you like to share with them most about yourself, if you will? For me? Mm -hmm. It's just believing in themselves, you know, doing what you love. I mean, from four years ago, I told my parents and told everyone, my goal is trying to be, trying to get like gold medal after like four years, the Beijing Olympic game. But I still remember my coach told me, if you want to get gold, you have to do like 1800 but from that time it was like impossible because I'm still learning 900 or 1080 to like 1080 but now I'm doing like 1980 or like 1800 I just believe in myself you know trying hard you have to believe in yourself once you find your goal just go for it